agriculture in this phenotype uh, and uh, to strategies to harden the micropropagated plant. As you have mentioned, I am from the College of Horticulture and Forestry, Central Agricultural University, Pasighat. So as you know, the culture induced phenotypes, uh, that is uh, a system, uh, as you know, in the micropropagation, the, the ultimate success of micropropagation is uh, the number of plants uh, that is possible to uh, uh, transfer from the in vitro condition to the ex vitro condition. Actually, what happened at uh, the culture induced phenotype, the aseptic culture of the plants by in vitro method, lead to the development of the culture induced phenotype, and which leads to the uh, because of this low level of light and aseptic condition and medium containing sugar and high level of humidity, these all the aseptic conditions uh, in uh, of the in vitro culture is leading to the development of the culture induced phenotype. And that is why this, uh, due to the culture in this phenotype, due to their morphophysiological disorders, they are not possible to transfer um, the plant and they are, when transferred, it will uh, subjected to the transplant saw. And that is why mortality is there. So that is why we are to understand the culture in this phenotype and the strategies to make the hardened plants. So as you know, the different kind of micropropagation techniques are here. Some of the techniques like micropropagation, meristem culture, and somatic embryogenesis, somatic variation, and embryo culture, in vitro selection, enter culture, and protoplast culture. These are some of the general techniques of the micropropagation. So along with this, uh, if you are talking about the different system of micropropagation, one is your meristem culture, where we can de eliminate the process, uh, disease free planting material, we can able to get it. And somatic embryogenesis, it is done for rapidly increasing the desirable plants while maintaining the genotype of the original plants. Another is your somaclonal variation to induce desirable, heritable uh, changes in the regenerated plants. And embryo culture is uh, to rescue the embryos during the attempt at white hybridization. And another is enter culture to produce homogeneous and pure breeding lines. And protoplast culture to incorporate potentially useful genes uh, for somatic embryogenesis, etc. So today I am going to discuss uh, some of the morphophysiological disorders of the in vitro culture plants. Uh, and uh, how these plants can be hardened. And these are some of my, I'll be sharing some of my experience, uh, which is being uh, published in the Scientia, Scientia Horticulture, as well as the current science and uh, some of the other uh, important uh, journals of the world. So let us discuss now. Uh, so as you know, the in general, the in vitro generation, what we are doing is, we are taking the explant and then uh, we may be taking these undifferentiated cicalas or uh, axillary bud proliferations. And then organogenetic cicalas may be formed and then the multiple suit and elongation and rooting is takes place and then, uh, and then uh, subjected to the hardening. So in general, uh, what happened in case of explant, we may be taking different plant parts and in case of culture media, uh, actually with different type of medias are already there. For example, the morosic and scoop media, B5 media, and our combination of the other plant growth regulators uh, with the varying sucrose concentration and varying uh, gelling agents. And uh, so far the physical culture condition is there, uh, is your uh, medium pH and temperature and light is important. So if you are, uh, as you know, the, uh, there are uh, actually uh, organogenesis takes place like this. Uh, for example, these are some of the proliferation expect we are uh, in case of tissue culture plants. Uh, this is how it is rooting is done. Uh, so uh, after this, uh, now uh, plants are subjected to the uh, acclimatizations. So in the acclimatization process, uh, there are different techniques. For example, uh, this you can see uh, the aseptic culture of plant tissues by in vitro method lead to the development of the culture in this phenotype, which is because of the low level of light, medium containing sugar and high level of humidity. So this is uh, how the culture induced phenotype is formed inside the culture vessel. 
And if you are talking about the some of the disorders, one of the disorder is your hyperherdicity, which is a bottleneck to the micropropagated plants. Hyperherdicity is a morphological and physiological disorder of plants and vegetatively propagated in vitro and where they, the plants will have a glassy appearance and their stems and leaves are often thick, rigid and easily uh, uh, breakable and decreased protein, decrease protein and chlorophyll content. This, whole, this has already been published uh, in um, one of the journals. Uh, and apart from this, uh, if you see Ecta in, uh, this was also published in Ecta Horticulture. Uh, this is how in case of carnation plant, uh, this is how the hyperherdated plants are there. So you see uh, these are normal plants and these are hyperherdated plants which is uh, glassy appearance with the brittle leaves. Uh, this is how, uh, on the other hand, uh, if you are talking about the in vitro plants, their anatomy. So uh, already this has been also published in some other journals, Indian Journal of Horticulture. Uh, what happened in case of in vitro culture plants, the plan, if you go to the plant anatomy under <clears throat> scanning electron microscopic study, so it is seen that large vicolated mesophyll cells are there and heter hypertrophy of the cells are there and larger intercellular spaces, lack of particular waxes and chloroplast present abundant prostoglobuli and guard cells were different in morphology and there is high level of uh, potassium. So this is how uh, it is done. Uh, if you see the scanning electron microscopic study of the leaves of the in vitro and the general, uh, then you can see the, uh, there is difference. The measurement of the amount of the epicritical rocks on leaves of culture plants, in vitro culture plants reveal that they lack, there is a lack of crystalline structure and uh, this wax is covered with the significantly less epicritical wax as compared to that greenhouse plant. And if you see uh, the, as compared to the greenhouse plant, the scanning electronic, uh, electron microscopy study shows that uh, there is difference in the epicritical wax formed in the cuticular layer of the leaves. And this is also being published in the 2020-2002 in Indian Journal of Horticulture. Uh, this is how another thing is that uh, <coughs> uh, in case of uh, their stomatal structure also, stomatal functioning also uh, is there is differences in the in vitro and the in general. And generally what happened in in vitro culture plants, the stomata remain open and uh, they uh, fail to close. And that is why there will be more transpirational losses takes place. And as a result, the transpiration uh, shock takes place on transfer from the in vitro to ex vitro conditions. Uh, this is also being published in uh, some of the Journal of Indian Journal of Agricultural Research. So this is how another is your influence of the sucrose. So, so as you know, the in vitro plants, uh, we are growing in different kind of medias containing sugars. So level of sucrose is also having the influence on the survival of the, um, uh, ultimately survival of the micropropagated plants. And this was also being studied and published in some uh, journals. And uh, another is your increasing agar. Increase in the concentration of the agar in the test tube uh, also has a direct influence on the morphology, morphogenetic responses of in vitro plants. And there is also significant increase in the survival percentage on uh, different varying concentration of the agar medium. So another is your inoculation with the appropriate uh, symbiotic organisms uh, also having uh, the influence on survival and performance of the in vitro cultured plants. And uh, if you see, uh, if you are, uh, Peclobitazil is one of the such chemicals uh, where in vitro survival percent of citrus microsuit as influenced by in vitro preconditioning with the varying level of Peclobitazil was also tested and it was published in 2001. Uh, so you see preconditioning microsuit with Peclobitazil influence a higher ex vitro survival by intense Intensifying the internal length and thickening of the roots and reducing the leaf dehydration by regulating the stomatal function and increasing epicuticular wax per unit area of leaf of in vitro culture 
citrus plants. So this was studied for citrus plants and this will be similar with some other plants also. So there is a direct influence of the preconditioning of microsuit with the pectobitazole has direct effect on next bit survival. And you can see the inclusion of the pectobitazole in the growth medium produce someta with minimal apparatus. So unlike the normal stomata, due to the general reduction in the cell expansion takes place. And then this, is, this was also published in the Polia horticulture published from Poland. So, <coughs> so another is your, uh, you see the, how the pectrobitazole works. Uh, this is a but pathway of the uh, uh, pectrobitazole uh, and pectrobitazole inhibits chlorine oxidase and thus blocks the oxidative reacti reactions from inchlorine to inchlorinitic acid in the pathway leading to the zebralic acid. So, and thus the pectrobitazole inhibit the uh, production of the zebralic acid and thus it acts. So this was also being published uh, in other journals. So another paper is here, you can see uh, uh, influence of in vitro preconditioning of the citrus microsoup with pectlobitazole, uh, who is uh, already been discussed. And apart from this, the larger persistent leaf packed with the greater amount of the storage compound would contribute more after transplantation. And increasing the concentration of the sugar in the media might maximize the nutrient function of the persistent leaf. So here the role of the persistent leaf is also important. So as much as the, there will be more persistent leaf, there will be more survival percentage. And another very interesting is that uh, if, if it is uh, the plants are developed under the low humidity uh, in the culture vessel, uh, will also have the uh, fewer transplantation shock problem ex vitro and persistent leaf that will more uh, look like a uh, normal leaves and this was also being published in the agrotropica published from brazil so this is how the uh, the reduced humidity inside uh, the culture vessel is being uh, reduced uh, and the plants are grown under a lower reduced humidity condition and as a result uh, there is uh, the less transplantation shock uh, uh, afterwards uh, so for the photosynthetic efficiency of the in vitro culture plants are there, the in vitro culture plants are either poor in chlorophyll content or the enzymes responsible for the photosynthesis, that is ribulose biphosphate and carboxylase are inactive or absent. This is also very interesting in case of in vitro culture plants uh, where the photosynthetic apparatus are not developed properly and as a result. And another, the, uh, if, uh, the strategy is that the control of carbon dioxide concentration in the culture vessel. The control of carbon dioxide concentration also is seen in acrylic boxes and having an air tight lid on the top. So when we are increasing the concentration of the carbon dioxide in the culture environment, then thereby it will in help in production of the uh, more survival plants. Another is your very interesting is your continuous, um, that means simultaneously, simultaneous routing and acclimatization. And this was also being published by me in the, in, uh, in during uh, 1905, uh, 99 and 96. Uh, uh, you see, this is very interesting. We are acclimatizing the citrus plants uh, and routing the citrus plants microsuit simultaneously in the test tube uh, in the bottle uh, with uh, some of the carriers like soil right <coughs> and their other uh, carriers and in their combination. So it is found that the direct routing and acclimatization has directly influenced the ex vitro survival percentage. So direct routing and acclimatization using two centimeter long micro suits of azile marmelos also uh, with treating um, them with IBA at uh, 10 ppm for two minutes and simultaneous routing of ex vitro uh, routing and acclimatization also achieved in uh, with the micro suit of carriers uh, along with a different other carriers also better routing up to 80 to 90 percent and ex vitro survival was also found in 90 to 97 percent which is important over conventional routing in agar-based medium. In general, what happened, 
the microsolids are subjected to the agar based medium and therefore there will be a lot of contamination also problem and uh, rooting percentage ultimately uh, is less as compared to this uh, this is a very good method uh, of direct uh, rooting and acclimatization of the different microsolids like citrus and bell which are of similar same same uh, family rutaceae and this is possible and this is shown here and another is your increasing the photo autotrophic micropropagation that is what uh, the photo autotrophic micropropagation and also uh, it is also there and where the improve the gas exchange culture in the culture carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide carbon dioxide uh, enrichment uh, is also another one and enrichment of the oxygen reduction increase the light and penetration of the container content and decrease the relative humidity of the culture vessel is also done in case of this photoautotopic micropropagation and thereby the increasing survival percentage in different plants so now uh, you see the if we are coming to the conclusion the ultimate success of the in vitro propagation on commercial scale depend on the ability to transfer plants out of culture vessel on a large scale at a low cost with high survival rate in vitro plant culture plants are generally susceptible to the transplantation shocks leading to the high mortality during final stage of micropropagation Therefore, understanding these abnormalities is a prerequisite to develop in efficient transplantation protocols. Uh, with this, I thank you very much to everyone for giving me the opportunity. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to answer anything if it is there. Thank you.